Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back at the clutter zone, and we're working on the U.S. Wrecker truck, and this is part four, and work continues apace. Let's get rid of this thing. Okay, and here she is. And when we left off last episode, we'd gotten the fuel tanks on. And I'm still missing one of the fuel caps. I'm hoping it'll turn up here somewhere in the clutter zone. Because that's the last place I saw it go. Pating! So what we've got to work on right now is the various rad hoses. And the intercooler hoses for the turbo. They have to be put on now. And we've got a little bit of work to do on the exhaust. And then finally... Finally, we can get to work on the cab. So the rad and the intercooler hoses have been painted German gray, and the fittings on the ends have been painted uh, tester steel, which I think is fairly restrained, and hopefully it should look good once we get them on there. So there's our radiator hoses and our intercooler hoses installed in the truck, and they all fit pretty good, with the exception of this one. This one needed to have a piece removed from this elbow to this elbow in order to get it to fit right. Otherwise, uh, they they all basically almost clipped into place. Just that one needed a little bit of modification to fit well. At this stage, Italeri would have you installing your cab mount and the mount for the sleeper. And I do have the mount for the sleeper just basically engaging in the holes in the side frames there. Um, the cab mount I have not glued in yet, and that's very deliberately so. Oftentimes with these large truck models, you will install, let's say, the cab according to the, uh, the marks on the frame, and then when you go to put the bonnet on the, the hood, you find that, oh, wait a minute, you know, there's a misalignment or whatever. So I find it's best to not glue these on right away and build the cab and everything like that and then when it's time to final assemble I'll be able to test fit okay this is where the bonnet wants to sit and be happy then I can mount the cab and make sure that the bonnet is going to sit on it properly and there's not going to be any gaps or anything like that so that's why I am not gluing these on yet I'm, I'm going to leave myself having the option to move things around and fudge things a bit. Here's a few more parts for the exhaust on the underside of the truck. This is basically a Y pipe here, and these are two mufflers that will go on there. I'm pretty sure everything from the mufflers on is going to be chrome parts. So these are the last parts that would have any sort of uh, rust on them or anything like that. I didn't put nearly as much dry brush rust on these parts as I did the pipe coming down from the turbo, mainly because the farther you get from the engine, the less heat you've got. I did put a little bit more dry brushing on these flexible areas here. Those are the corrugated bits, mainly because that's a little bit thinner metal, so it would have more of a tendency to rust. The mufflers, I gave a little bit more rust on those, basically because the material used for mufflers often is not the highest quality because it tends to be a replaceable part. We've got these that are ready to go on the underside of the truck now. What you're looking at is the second attempt at getting the exhaust mounted. Gluing it on up here isn't an issue. That's a, just a nice... I won't even say it's a butt joint. There's an actual socket between the uh, exhaust pipe and this piece right here. And mounting the mufflers onto the Y pipe here isn't a real problem either because they have a nice hole that this slides into. Where it gets complicated is, I can show you on the one I haven't mounted yet, is you can see they've got these little clips that are supposed to go onto the frame. Well, the number one first problem is the mufflers end up being 
maybe about an eighth of an inch farther back than the spots on the frame they're supposed to go onto. So they don't fit really well. And the other problem is, is that everything is trying to fit into the same place. So what I ended up doing on this one for the second attempt is I cut off the top of the clips since they weren't really contributing much anyway. Super glued the muffler onto the exhaust pipe and then I used normal styrene cement to glue the muffler to the frame. And of course I did have to scrape the paint off in that area. So we'll see just how much I break off as I go to put the second muffler on. Now what you're seeing is me trying to clamp the bracket that holds the muffler in place. Basically I've got the tweezers applying the force to hold the bracket to the frame and then the clothespin is actually taking the place of my fingers because I don't want to sit here for 15-20 minutes holding it. So a little bit of a fit issue there. Um, basically what I did is I took the the top of the tabs off and I'm just gluing them directly to the frame in order to get those mufflers to stay in place. So it's been a little challenging getting these to stay in place. Hopefully by the time the glue sets it'll be pretty strong. I've glued the two halves of the hood together and at first you might think oh this is going to be pretty flimsy but it is fairly strong and fortunately this part here goes up inside and it's actually a duct which runs from the two breather holes on the sides and then that goes into the air cleaner that's mounted on the firewall so once you put this in it should make for a very very strong assembly and I was a little concerned that I was going to have to pre-paint the inside but because this is such a dark gray part and we're going to be having the grills on the outside I don't think that's going to be necessary and here it is with the duct glued in place and one thing you want to make sure you do is to make sure that you hold this until your glue goes off and that way it'll give it maximum strength but this is starting to have the nice chiseled lines that the LTL 9000 is known for. All right, so I think it's about time we start putting the cab together. And if you're used to doing the, the older AMT kits, you'll be a little surprised to find out that the, uh, the Italeri kits basically come as a bunch of separate parts that get assembled together to create the cab and I don't recall any fit issues with the Aeromax that I built 10 years ago so hopefully we won't have any problems with this one. Yeah, okay, that's enough assembly for now. As tempting as it is to continue, I've got some other things to worry about, such as what color am I going to paint this thing? And as well as that, I've got a bed to put in here. Actually, there's two beds. There's an upper bunk here. I think the upper bunk I'm going to put in a flipped up position just because probably 99% of the time a tow truck driver is on his own. Um, so obviously I've got to paint that lower bunk there. 
I might put a little bit more detailing in here. I don't know. I've got the roof here and it looks like it'll go on fairly well. But like I said, I've got to worry about my external color, which I haven't actually decided on yet. And the driver's cab itself, I need to do a few other things here before I, uh, I need to make sure that my interior is gonna fit and things like that. But it's one of these, what do you do first, second, and third things? Something that I'm a little surprised at is it Larry doesn't give you any seat backs. And I'm 99% sure that the seat backs are unnecessary because, you know, there's no windows in the back of the sleeper. However, it bothers me. So this is my solution to it. I took some 10 thou evergreen styrene and I didn't worry about cutting it exact with the exception of where it needs to go around the, uh, the armrest there. And I went with a piece that's this thin, just basically so that it will easily take the complex shape of the back. Now this may look kind of crude, but you know what? This will be easy to clean up. Once this dries nice and solid, I'll be able to just slice this with a sharp blade and give it a quick sanding and that'll, that'll represent the seat back. Like I said, I'm 99% sure. I don't need to worry about it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Once the glue dried on my seat backs, I was able to quickly trim it off using a knife blade. And like I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if nobody ever knows whether they're seat backs or not, but I feel better knowing they're there. This part is the front of the floor and the bottom area of the uh, firewall. And as you can see, there's a seam there and there that just kind of screams out model kit. So I'm just going to putty that just to eliminate it. It's time to start painting the interior portions. And I know it's already molded in gray, but I'm going to be sticking with gray. I'm not 100% certain as to how I'm going to be painting the outside of this truck yet. So at least a, a dark to medium gray is a safe color to use. It'll pretty much go with anything. However, the first thing I'm going to do is these pieces here and the surround around the gear shift. I'm going to be painting those steel before moving on to the other colors. And that way I can be sloppy with my steel and then I can bring the, the various grays up to these parts. And as well as that, the firewall itself, the inside portion, I'm going to be painting it semi-gloss black. Here's the floor and the firewall of the truck. And I've done most of the painting on it. And as I said, I'm using a couple of different grays. One is kind of a bluish gray, one's kind of a greenish gray. And I used my favorite rubber color, which is German gray for the grommet here and the floor mats. And I'm gonna use the same sort of colors for the inside door, door panels and the roof as well. Here's our door panels all painted up. Once again, with a couple of different grays and then the window winders painted up and the door handles in silver. Here's our roof, the inside. And one th more thing I've got to do is just put a little bit of a wash in these grills right here. But otherwise this is ready to go inside the truck once it gets painted up. One part of the cab's interior that we have not yet worked on is the dashboard. And that's mainly because they give us a god awful hideous decal to go there. So it's going to be kind of a minor scratch build slash kit bass project to do a decent dashboard. And that's going to be done next episode, hopefully. Okay, so here's the floor of our cab just sitting on the frame just to see how it's going to sit on there. Now, it has to engage with these two little posts right here, there and there. And then, as I said before, this 
holds the back of the cab. And already I'm seeing that there's going to be a few fit issues. So I'm going to have to do a, quite a few test fits and things. And as well as that, I want to get the, the hood involved so that when it swings in place, it's going to engage properly. But that just about does it for this episode of Dan's Model Works. And thanks for watching. And until next time, keep on modeling.